Good morning, and welcome to worship with us at Jubilee United Church in Burnaby and wherever you are using the internet. My name is Marie Paul. I'm a student minister and congregation member here. Reverend Graham Brown Miller is resting. He's taking some time for recreation. I'll be with you next week as well. Today we have Barb Bierhaus helping us with the reading and Barry Morley will be sharing prayers from home. And as always, thank you to Andrew Burge for running our technology. We're grateful that you have joined us. We acknowledge that we worship, work, live and play on the traditional unceded ancestral lands of the Halkmalem and the Squamish speaking peoples. We don't have a formal relationship with these people, but we've been paying attention to how to be in right relationship with our indigenous neighbors and friends. I've been enjoying sweet conversations hosted by Reconciliation Canada, an organization created by Chief Robert Joseph, who some like to call Bobby Joe, and his daughter, Karen Joseph, with the indigenous comedian, Candy Palmader, and guest musicians every week. These conversations are so positive. You could also join in on Zoom. And even while taking solemn prayerful moments to remember all the indigenous children and their loss and current struggles, still, it is a good positive place to be. I pray that all my relations learn to value the traditional teachings of the indigenous and that we enact justice in new ways, new ways to manage and share the earth's resources, caring for one another. As a church family, we want to affirm all of you who gather with us today, whomever you are, however you need to be here. We affirm you and your presence. We want people to feel that this is a place for them. We don't always meet that mark, but we strive for it. So no matter how great or small you feel your faith is, no matter if it's your first time coming to this or to any church, no matter if you were raised here or it's the first time in a while, no matter what it is you think keeps you from connecting to the source of all being, we hope you feel included in what we do here. Whatever your age, your skin color, culture, race, whatever your marital or economic status, your ability or differing ability, your sexual orientation or your gender identity, even whatever your theological beliefs, you are welcome here. We recognize that our diversity pleases God and Jubilee United Church is glad that God has gathered us together. So let's begin our worship. Come away from summer fun. Come away for a brief time. Come away from busyness and work. This is the time for listening and learning, for praying and singing. Come friends, let's pay attention to God's compassion as seen in Jesus. Let us dream of children playing together and our hearts growing. I hope you'll feel free to light a candle in your home as I light this Christ candle for us all. There once was a man who lived with such loving connection to God that people noticed and followed him. May the light of Jesus continue to shine in our hearts and in our actions. Shepherd God, you call us into rhythms of work and rest. So shape our leisure and our labor that the world will recognize us as Jesus's disciples and recognize our ministry as healing hope in the world. Amen.
for our discovery time today with kids. I get the fun of reading a book. <laughs> I wish you were here in person so you could interact with me as I read the book. But you will see the illustrations on the screen. This is a book by Archbishop Desmond Tutu, God's Dream. And it's illustrated by Le Yuen Pham. Dear child of God, what do you dream about in your loveliest of dreams? Do you dream about flying high or rainbows reaching across the sky? Mm, they're dreaming. Do you dream about being free to do what your heart desires or about being treated like a full person, no matter how young or old you might be? Each of us carries a piece of God's heart within us. And when we love one another, the pieces of God's heart are made whole. Do you know what God dreams about? If you close your eyes and look with your heart, I am sure, dear child, that you will find out. Please join me in prayer. Dear God, we share your dream of children playing together. We also share a dream of safety and kindness for all. Thank you for giving us pictures and books and hearts full of love. Amen. Reading from the book of Mark, chapter 6, verses 30 to 34. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them coming and going and recognized them. And they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to a land at Gethsemeret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to whoever they heard he was. And whenever he went into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his cloak and all who touched it were healed. A reading from the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 11 to 22. So remember that once you were Gentiles by physical descent, who were called uncircumcised by Jews, who are physically circumcised. At that time, you were without Christ. You were aliens rather than citizens of Israel and strangers to the covenants of God's promise. In this world, you had no hope and no God, but now thanks to Christ Jesus, you who once were so far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Christ is our peace. He made both Jews and Gentiles into one group. With his body, he broke down the barrier of hatred that divided us. He canceled the detailed rules of the law 
so that he could create one new person out of the two groups making peace. He reconciled them both as one body to God by the cross, which ended the hostility to God. When he came, he announced the good news of peace to you who were far away from God and to those who were near. We both have access to the Father through Christ by the one spirit. So you are no longer strangers and aliens. Rather, you are fellow citizens with God's people and you belong to God's household. As God's household, you are built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. The whole building is joined together in him and it grows up into a temple that is dedicated to the Lord. Christ is building you into a place where God lives through the Spirit. Hear what the Spirit is saying through these ancient words of Scripture. Thanks, Thanks. be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, dear God, our rock and our foundation. Jubilee is building a new church, building a house for God, like David wanted to build a temple for the ark. Like we want to build a stable in our heart during Christmas. Or at Easter time, we want to build space for resurrection, space for reconciliation. God invites us to come away at this time in the gospel reading today, in Mark's gospel, come away for rest and prayer. And we also see Jesus responding with compassion there were challenges to coming away and to resting when you're so engaged in ministry, when you see the people like sheep without a shepherd. And so we hear the call, we see the challenge, we see compassion. In Mark's gospel, Jesus shares food and community again and again. But this is done in Jesus's time within that imperial Roman society, a society built on honor and status. And so Mark shows us contrasting banquets, the party with Herod, the feeding of the 5,000, a party for leaders only, feeding all the people. You see the contrasting leaders in Herod and Jesus. But that contrast and some of that conflict continues. Today, we still experience conflict. There's too much division and too much polarization. Our society is becoming as stratified as it was in the past, the rich and the poor, the haves or have nots, the conservatives versus the liberals. It is election season. We'll hear a lot about that. But back in the time of Jesus and Paul, there was an element of danger. It was dangerous following God's way because of that Roman oppression, because of the clash of Jew and Gentile. They were unable to eat together. The temple had walls to divide and notices that said, Gentiles, no further. In fact, the conflict included Paul. Paul got kicked out of Ephesus. That's why he was writing letters to them, because he couldn't actually be with them. And not just Ephesus, but those letters then would be circulated and would go to all the communities. At the time, those followers didn't have church buildings. Followers of the way, they met in their homes. They gathered in their homes. 
but the conflict they experienced, our conflict looks different. Conflict now looks like backlash and pushback. Even while some of us, possibly most of us, are working on anti-racism, are trying to bring in changes for justice, still racism is increasing. I experienced this in the public library where I work. Some of the questions I get include, what are jobs for foreign nationals? And I'm so tired of all of this complaining from the indigenous. Give me statistics on successful indigenous people. Faithfully, we continue our work. And Paul writes to us, Paul writes to Jubilee, reminding all of us, reminding Christians that we are one people, that God loves unity in diversity. We are no longer slaves, strangers. Instead, Christ embodies the good news of peace. We are citizens and we are householders. We are children of God. A celebration of unity and diversity is the heartbeat of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what one person wrote in their commentary. Jesus embodies peace, embodies love, embodies reconciliation embodies compassion. When Paul was writing of this, Paul wrote in Greek, the language of the letters of the day, and he used the word ecclesia, ecclesia for the gathering of the people. We translate it as church, but it was much more the people who take care of each other, the household, something more than a building. Yesterday, when I was listening to Chief Robert Joseph and Karen Joseph, Karen used the word, a Coast Salish word, namiu. We are all one, namiu. A little bit like the saying, all my relations. They were asked to share their vision of what a world without racism would look like. And Bobby Joe talked about waking up to a beautiful world, a world that was more beautiful, more vibrant, where he could look out and see children of different families and different heritages playing together. Karen shared her picture of students standing on a top step, Indigenous students who had both their culture and their education together with respect. At Jubilee, Christ is building you, Christ is building us into a place where God lives through the Spirit. We are no longer South and West Burnaby, but one Jubilee Ecclesia. Jubilee breaks down barriers when we serve lunches and chat with Asian, with Indigenous, with white neighbors. When we organize the thrift shop and help others fill their need. Jubilee breaks down walls and lifts up people when we affirm that Christian good news includes the love of the LGBTQ community. Jubilee breaks barriers and lifts others up when we support the children, all the children, every child treated with kindness and respect. We are building a Jubilee Ecclesia 
with Christ's spirit living in our hearts. Amen. Barry, we're hoping you're going to be unmuted and ready to go. Hello. You're good to go. Okay, you can hear me? Yes. Good. Let us pray together. 
Gracious and loving God, creator of all things and friend, we live in tumultuous times, O oh God, as our entire planet groans with the pains of change, much of it frightening with unknown consequences. Many changes that have been brought on by our own stubborn insistence that we can manage on our own without your help. We have known for decades, O oh God, that the continued and growing use of fossil fuels were due to our planet. And by ignoring the science, we have mismanaged our industry, creating an environment of fear, <clears throat> destruction, and blame. <clears throat> the warming climate, coupled with the COVID pandemic and racism, have presented a precarious future for us. Help us, O oh God, to bring ourselves and our political leaders to task by speaking truth to power and working together to make changes to save this beautiful planet you have given us. We know your desire for us to live in harmony with each other and all of creation. Help us to counter racism with compassion and love for those who have been targeted. We pray for ourselves and we work as we work through the tragedy of the residential schools. We pray for our neighbors in the USA where racism dominates public discourse. May we all find commonality in your truth, O oh God. With, our, with open hearts and minds and Christian awareness of people's needs globally and locally as we witness families fleeing environmental disaster and political upheaval and the, and the COVID crisis, which continues to take many lives. Protect those who are on the front lines of God, working in the hospitals, on the streets, and the burning forests. Help us discern what we see and hear on the social media from those who use dangerous times to ingratiate themselves with, with distortions of what is happening and why. We thank you, God, for each other and for the leadership of this faith community. Guide us as we plan the future of this church and the work that we will continue to do by your name. We pray for our families and friends in this congregation, dear God. May those who are sick and lonely find comfort in your love as we reach out to them in your name. Now let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Gary. Thank you, Gary. Well, I have just a few announcements for the life and the work of the church. Our Bible study group is going to continue with one more session. Uh, being led by myself tomorrow while Dorothy has a break. So Monday at 1.30, we'll be discussing Ephesians 2. And we have a lot to celebrate. It is summertime. We have birthdays. Jacqueline, Patricia, Linda, happy birthday. And there are anniversaries in our community. Andrew and Christina are celebrating on Monday. Don and David will be celebrating. And Dave and Brenna, happy anniversary. 
please stick around after worship. We will be doing breakout rooms and we'll see you there. This is a time when in the church we would normally do uh, an offering, a gathering. Um, there are different ways that you can do this now. You can mail the check to the office or drop it off. Join PAR, which is that monthly automatic remittance. Or you can send an e-transfer to office at jubilee-unitedchurch.uc. Jubilee there's also the canadahelps.org website, and you can search for Jubilee United Church. We know that our offerings and our ministry are so much more than just money. So I give thanks and dedicate all of our offerings, our talents, our money, our gifts, loving God, receive our gifts of labor and love, that the whole world may be one with you, none of you. Let these gifts bring kindness and connection, and may we see all our relations as children playing in your home. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>